did we need the big volume? Did we need the big volume to push up on the triple Qs? And you just see the volume surges as you needed those day highs. So absolutely, I feel um, the volume obviously tapering off right now for the afternoon. And the Qs, and just a, basically a very bullish channel. I would not call this a bull flag formation. Let's see, maybe... Do you, you confirm? Yeah, you confirm on the hourly. You definitely are in a bull flag formation right here. You could just basically see what's happening, just triangulating on the moment at, on the hourly. And we're trying to basically get a direction for the market. Right now, there's what I like to call a fray. And um, what happens in a fray? It's almost like a feeding frenzy of sharks. And analogically speaking here, you take a look at the markets, and what happens is you have people that are unloading tremendous positions, people who are on the sidelines holding a lot of shares, and they're dumping or they're adding and they're buying, and there's a lot of head-to-head -head right now in the bulls. And what happens as a result is you have very dramatic moves in a lot of these stocks. So definitely not the market for the faint of heart. You're looking for simple moves and a very you know slow grinding channel. Look, there might be stocks out there doing that, but for the most part, the market isn't really doing that. I mean, you're getting pretty tight here. You have a pretty defined range here at the moment, 65.82 on the resistance side, 65.74 on the support. So you have that nice little eight cent range where you could potentially break up or down from. Again, nothing too exciting um, for me. Honestly, um, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan of August. September is when I start peeking my head in. October... 50-50, November 75-25, and December, we're always ready to roll. So, um, again, trading is going, you know, we have good months and bad months. Just historically speaking, who knows? This summer could be different. It could be, you know, March 2009. You could just have a crazy summer, but historically speaking ladies and gentlemen this is definitely where the market slows off september october november are test months where the volatility might start to rise and then it really starts to peak december january february march april and then of course slows down on may june july and we're in august so Definitely a summer day right now, and you're just watching the market trying to, you know, push through day highs right here. Uh, my idea here was Apple uh, puts here this morning, and uh, I took some of those, and basically the market wasn't able to hold up. Apple did put in, uh, keep pushing up, and I did throw away my puts. So um, that was just basically the major thing I was watching. KCG, uh, definitely something you want to keep on the radar. Take a look at this hourly chart. What does that tell you that's happening today? Any thoughts? I want to know if you guys think the same way. What are your thoughts when you see this hourly formation from today? Obviously starting right here with the 930 bar. What do you think of today's hourly candles? You know, I mean, what are your thoughts? <laughs> yep. Volume is tapering off. That's exactly right, and not only is volume tapering off, setting, saying that it's going to maybe be very mild and tepid action until you get that potential resolution, but you're also looking at a series of tails. you got a doji star right here, and you're putting in that very tight range. What that tells me in English is that the bulls nor bears can take control of the stock. In my opinion, for as many people who want to see this thing go down to a dollar, there's just as many people who want to see this thing go to six bucks on a share basis basis i'm not talking individual by individual but the shares of volume that were pounding into each other basically got the stock nowhere right i mean granted it's a three dollar stock a 30 cent range on the stock is a 10 percent range that's tremendous and obviously uh, stock definitely in the news you have over at hourly resistance potential breakout here three dollars 35 cents um i think the calls are uh, definitely an interesting way to play this stock i mean <laughs> You got your uh, 250 calls even trading a dollar 15 by a dollar and a quarter. So figure um, you're paying you know 30, 40 cent premium above the strike price uh, for that call, and that obviously expires in a couple weeks. So that's also an interesting idea. Um, other interesting ideas are playing versus hourly support. And you can see we held hourly support pretty well. 311 would probably be my key line in the sand. And I'd look for potential blips under three dollars if I am to re-enter. And um, you know, on a formation like this, expect some form of significant re resolution. And why significant? 
it's just as easy as taking a look at the daily chart here and you see that quick plummet down in the market so just keep that in mind you did have that uh, pullback a bear flag digestive pattern uh, let me put it in English you're ready for this quote me on this and I might be wrong and I might be right but technically speaking and you can quote me on this if we break 432 whenever that may or may not be in KCG if we break four dollars and 32 cents I think we have a gap fill to 685 that would represent over a hundred percent move from the stock at the current levels and again I wouldn't even be bullish on the stock it would just be one of those things where um, you know you look for a potential digestive pattern I would expect a lot of volatility there I'm expecting some form of resolution today too many things over the weekend happening how many people are going to be trading this because you know to hold this stock Saturday Sunday and come in Monday there's a million and one things that could obviously happen over the weekend for the company in the shape that it's in right now so keep in mind I'm sure the premiums are going to be very juicy going into the weekend so a lot of people flipping their positions it's definitely something you um, at least want to keep an eye on you know in fact I recommend that you probably don't trade this name especially if you're not experienced with these sort of things especially if you have problems finding good risk reward but even if you don't trade this thing you should definitely watch this thing because this is going to be an educational lesson within itself taking a look right now Rosetta genomics four dollars seventy six cents pulling down right now um, you know that was a nice little uh, bounce it tried to have towards uh, five bucks we were able to catch it on that nice little candle and now the stock pulling right back down trading ten cents off of the day lows so it is a summer day nothing too exciting for me I'd rather be heavier in one position than lighter in several and again that's not always the case you know in a very active market with everything moving I want to take a lot of high probability trades in a market like this I'd rather be extremely selective I'd rather say no to nine things and yes to one so if you could find that uh, proper risk reward on you know whatever chart pattern you're setting up I would try to you know attack fewer plays with more conviction if you can find it if you can't don't do it but I would try to on a day like today attack uh, fewer things that you have higher conviction on so without further ado I'm just gonna keep it very simple if you guys have any stock chart patterns that you would like break uh, broken down on this uh, very tepid summer day off a nice little pop-up in the market now would be the time to ask welcome back Dow 13 K Captain Obvious. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's a summer day, guys, you know. Whatever. You know, it's funny. I had this ex-girlfriend that I've dated for a few years, right? And the funniest thing about her was, you know, she was always, like, sad. She was always, like, in a pessimist she always looked at the glass half empty so um you know just one of those types of girls so I actually said you know I actually called her I feel bad it was a terrible thing to say but you know I called her admiral of the sad fleet and uh, <laughs> for some reason that always stuck around alongside with Captain Obvious of course so I don't know why I thought of that Facebook all right so taking a look at Facebook we were talking about the break of overhead resistance I talked about it earlier potentially rounding off and forming that bear flag digestive pattern I almost uh, pinged it perfectly last time I was uh, looking for a move to 34 to 35 dollars when we were trading at 27 so just keep that in mind I was right before on this place so that just gives me personal conviction of a, of a move like this today um, for me right now in Facebook again very weak stock a break in 1982 two dollars lower breaks it or tests all-time lows again you are breaking overhead daily resistance you have a double overhead daily resistance break and um, just be careful because this is what happened last time you hit an all-time low off of a big green bar on a on a break what was that day May 31st right here that beautiful big hammer bar 
um, where the stock hit a low of 26.83, got as high as, and, uh, and closed at 29.60, got as high as 29.67. And unfortunately, a few days later, you broke down from that 26.83 low. You hit 25.75. And then you were able to go up. So in a situation like this, um, I'm not sure if it's going to act the same as last time. I mean, it probably has a higher probability of acting the same last time as stocks tend to try to develop those habits and tendencies, if you will. Um, for me, I'm ultimately looking for a move. I don't, I don't know if it comes, you know, next week. I would say it's likely to be. There's a good chance you could be weak on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday if you follow that same technical formation as previously, like representing your June 1st, June 4th, and uh, June 5th days where you did pull down after popping up. So I would say, you know, ultimately off a chart pattern like this, I would ultimately look for a move to 2454 and if we break through there i would look for 2673 that is the type of target i'm trying to look for on facebook right now the only tricky thing is is where it's going to be your entry me personally i think for that reason it's easier to attack these things in calls you guys want a lottery play how about the facebook 22 dollar calls trading 15 by 20 cents right now how's that for a nice little lottery ticket stocks 18 cents off that level currently so just keep that in mind um, i would look potentially further out on a on a position like this for me what's uh what I find uh, very sexy here are the August $24 calls. And I know that's a little bit out of the money, but they're trading 40 by 45 cents. And you have a nice two weeks to hold the name before expiration on August 18th. So just keep that in mind for uh, a stock like Facebook right here. And for me, ultimately, I am looking for that turning point. I'm just not sure that the all-time low is going to remain at 1982. There's a good chance it does, good chance it doesn't just around 50 50 in my head five minute chart it's a daily look beautiful five minute chart right now did ascending channel resistance break on this line it did why how do we know there's your volume search so we know technically we drew this with conviction right now and you had a bearish move right back into the bullish channel ascending channel support right here 2175 great risk reward right here at these levels if you're looking for a potential retest of $22 and of course your risk reward would be a little better and even I would like it more if you could buy it like in the 70s so just keep that in mind it's a nice little look here and you're in a beautiful well-defined ascending channel Hey Kip, we're going to take a look at Lulu Lemon right here, Lulu Lemon Athletica. 57.13 is going to be your trigger representing your August 1st high and a break of that level. You have over a daily resistance, $58.55. Let's take a look at the five-minute chart right now. Maybe we could get a nice little read on this puppy as well. And unfortunately, you have a bearish rising wedge or not maybe very fortunately i don't know you know longer or short but uh for me right here this is an extremely bearish rising wedge i would give it just a little less conviction because it's not off of a bull flag formation or even more conviction if it was off of a bear flag formation this could be one of the most bearish setups um i don't you know i don't see a big bear flag formation probably on the daily you do and if you zoom out, you do see confirmation of the bear flag right here on the daily. So you are in a bear flag on the daily, and you're in a rising wedge on the five-minute. Short term, I would look for a potential scalp pop here through 57.13. If it could test those levels with a very quick sell. And for me, overall on the daily, still a bearish pattern on the five-minute bearish rising wedge. Major doom. <laughs> Could be, Jeff. <laughs> you never know. No, who knows? I, I'm, a, I'm a vivacious, jolly guy. Who would, What girl wouldn't want a guy like me who sits in front of a computer all day looking at charts? I look like I got punched in the face. Take a look at those black circles. You see that? You see those black circles? Yeah. It's from hours and hours and days and months and years and
Bloxy and Mobin again in Lulu Slipstream GIL. Is that that uh, sportswear brand? Yeah, Gildan Activewear. It's a nice little look there. There's a potential comp. Check out what this puppy is doing. Beautiful breakout here for the name right now. Um, you're approaching $30.24 is going to be an A-plus trigger. And Gary India Larry up 6.6%. That represents right here. Uh, 3024, your August 1st high, 2011, with your overhead daily resistance, 3185. So, very nice A plus trigger there. Melanox trading at day highs here as well. Definitely another name you want to keep an eye on. This thing could explode to 120. You know, you have to keep that in mind with a name like this. You're trading at all time highs, and the thing has a very hard time pulling back, even though, ironically, we have caught this thing short before. 108.50 is going to be your all-time high on Mellanox. You could set an alert there if you like that name. Sure, absolutely. I could look at rig. Let's start off with the weekly. All right, let's draw some lines. Every time you have a weekly chart, there's a lot of technical breakdown that you could use effectively because you have so much time frame in there. All right, so on the weekly, you're in a well-defined ascending channel, and you're within a greater falling wedge pattern now. That's what you're dealing with with rig right here. So you're digesting in this pattern at the moment. Let's just erase that. You're digesting in this pattern at the moment. You're within an ascending channel on the daily, and you're within a bullish, uh, a major bullish falling wedge. Now, granted, falling wedge support is at forty dollars. It's twenty percent uh, lower, or seventeen and a half percent lower, whatever. But you take a look at a channel like this, and all you have to do is really define your time frame for how long you want to hold it. You're in a major ascending channel, and obviously a more of a major bullish falling wedge. On the daily, it's going to look the same. Same story, morning glory. You take a look here. you got overhead daily resistance trigger. Key trigger, 49.88. That's going to be a critical level you want to watch. 52 and a quarter overhead daily resistance from that level. So that is an A-plus trigger. Very nice over there. You have 49.33 coinciding nearby. That represents yesterday's high. So that's the look right there on the daily. The five-minute. I'd give credence right here to this ascending channel. Off of the bull flag. This is your ascending channel right now. Five minute ascending channel support, 4871. Five minute ascending channel resistance, 4926. So, hope those levels help. Just really define your time frame. You picked a lot of time frames. Some of the time frames, you know, might be different than others. It depends how far out you're looking for. And if you are looking even very far out, for example, that doesn't mean you shouldn't still buy your stocks on support lines. Maybe you'll never get back to that support line. You never know. So because you never know in trading, the smartest thing logically to do is to always attack things on support lines or verse critical support levels that you draw or you see using any technical analysis because ultimately the closer you buy to support the closer the tighter of a stop you can have versus the break of a major level and same thing on shorting on the resistance end all right so very simple summer day again just going to take things uh, pretty slow right now. Nothing to get too excited about on a day like today. And uh, for me, if you want to watch uh, history in the making, Kilo Charlie Gary. Something's going to happen. Something is brewing. I don't believe you could be in this tight range through the weekend. Too many bets are going to be made to the short side. Too many bets are going to be made to the long side. And I want to see those two um, bulls. I want to see the head of the bull and the head of the bear collide running full force at each other. So and that's just a potential scenario. Again, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I think it's a very likely scenario to happen. So definitely watch Kilo Charlie Gary. So I hope you guys enjoyed this webcast presentation. Happy trading. Make money. Be very selective on your future positions. Don't get too excited for a month like this. And make sure that you're ready to... Um, remain strong until the market gets some more resolution. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Whole food markets, yeah. 
See, on the daily, this thing was an absolute beast. What would really scare me, Phyllis, is if you start breaking through 9083 in the name, and I don't think that'll happen today or whatnot, and I don't think it's going to bust through 100. All-time highs, 97 and a quarter. You're closer to that range than the downside, and you're putting in a little bit of a doji start today. So as the day goes on, as it gravitates potentially higher or lower, it's going to definitely add to the conviction factor on a chart pattern like this. So hope you guys enjoyed this webcast presentation, and I'll see you guys here on the live trading broadcast.